I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals. Here's your afternoon update on what's going on in the tropics. Three hurricanes, three of them at one time, not unprecedented, but look at Irma, a Category 5. Look at Jose, now a Category 3, and Hurricane Katia, that is a Category 1. Irma, though, is the big deal because it is moving into a much more populated area. Hurricane warnings for the northern coast of the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, the Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas. No warnings yet for South Florida, but this is going to be changing. If you live in those areas, you've got to keep up with what's going on. As of late afternoon, still a powerful Category 5. Irma is setting records for how long it stayed strong and how strong it is. But note the max wind, 175 miles an hour. But when you look closer, you have to remember that that wind is, does, doesn't cover the entire shield of clouds. It's in a confined area. So that's a satellite very clearly. You see the eye near Cockburn Town, and every once in a while you'll see a satellite that looks like this. Instead of showing shades of gray, it's colorized so that you can figure out which clouds are higher, and the color is based on how cold the cloud is, higher clouds or colder. Either way, it shows you where mo most of the core of the hurricane is, but don't confuse that with the radar. Unfortunately, there are not enough radars in that part of the world to actually look at where the rain is falling. So again, satellite view, eye of the storm, but then look at the hurricane force winds. As of afternoon, they extend out about 70 miles in each direction from the center. So when you hear that 175 mile an hour wind, it's right around the center of the eye, but still winds of 75 miles or more in that reddish area. And then tropical storm force winds extend farther outward. That means basically 40 miles an hour or more. So that's where the real strength of the hurricane is. It's not necessarily an entire cloud mass. But in the forecast map, things have not changed in the last couple of days. Most computer models continue to show a turn on Saturday, somewhere near the Florida Keys. Now, that exact timing will control how far west it goes or how far east it goes. And again, it's just a prediction. It's not a guarantee that that's exactly what's going to happen. The forecast cone, though, from the National Hurricane Center takes into account what could happen. That's why the cone gets wider with time, simply because it is less certain what the future holds. But in the near term, winds will stay Category 5 strength for the next couple of days. As it gets closer to South Florida, winds should diminish some, but still it's going to be a powerful system. And certainly once it moves farther inland into the southeastern U.S., winds will diminish. The threat will go from being just a windstorm, but there will be a continuous threat of storm surge wherever the wind is blown up against the land, a threat of tornadoes, and also that threat of flooding rain, but rain becomes more so of a threat as it goes inland. So here's a close up view of the forecast cone. Now this would be a perfect forecast Sunday morning. Perfect forecast meaning the storm would be right in the middle of the cone, which is South Florida. Now that's not perfect for Florida, but if the forecast is off a little bit, let's say it goes farther eastward across the Bahamas, well, in that case, the east coast of Florida would get a direct wind coming off of the Atlantic Ocean. That means water pushed up against the shore, creating storm surge. Within the bands that feed that system, you could potentially see tornadoes. The west coast of Florida, in this case, would have a westerly wind approaching. A little bit of storm surge there, but not as much as on the east coast. But let's say that system takes a more westerly track. What that means is all of South Florida, all from the Keys up along the East Coast, would still have storm surge, water being pushed up against the coast. And then for folks in Tampa, they would have a calmer wind to start until the system goes northward. Then the wind would shift around and push water up into Tampa Bay. Keep in mind, these are all scenarios, and that's why you've got to be prepared anywhere in South and Central Florida. Now, for folks in the Central Gulf Coast in the WKRG News 5 area where I broadcast, what we are looking at is this system staying to our east. Monday morning or Monday afternoon, 90 mile an hour winds, assuming it moves right across Florida, the wind speed will diminish. It possibly, though, can take a much more easterly track. And look at that. Monday afternoon, it could be on the coast of Georgia or South Carolina. In the worst case, again, these are possible scenarios. And then for folks in the News 5 area, if it takes a much more westerly track going, say, toward Apalachicola or it's a southeastern Alabama, we would have mostly a dry northerly wind. I say dry because the moisture would be wrapped inland, raining over the land, and by the time it circulates all the way around, you start picking up drier air coming in from the northwest. So this clearly shows there are multiple possibilities, and it means you've got to be prepared for any of them. This is still days away from those locations. Let's talk about Jose. It was a Category 1, now it's a Category 5. 
It's a thousand miles away from Irma in terms of eye to eye, but it may actually move across the same islands like Barbuda, Anguilla, and the Virgin Islands that Irma moved over as a strong hurricane and then turning northward into the Atlantic where it may linger in loop for a couple of days, just worrying people. Hurricane season can be active. This one is Katia. That's a category one storm. Not moving right now, but watch this forecast model. Katia eventually goes into Mexico as a moderate hurricane with mostly rain. And behind me in this forecast map, 1130 central time tomorrow morning, it looks like Irma will continue that same path heading toward the west-northwest. Notice, off the coast of Cuba, just into the Bahamas, it could be anywhere in this area with a lot of clouds, but the core of it, that's the area to watch. Now, the forecast model stops at 4.30 afternoon in the afternoon on Saturday, and around that time is when it should begin to turn. So exactly when it turns will define where it will go beyond that. And remember the variables, land would weaken it, a warm Gulf Stream would strengthen it. So we don't know exactly what this is going to do. As always, make sure you have a safety plan. Make sure you keep up with what's going on. It's the peak of hurricane season. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.